Well, hello, Fellowship Church, and anyone else who's watching. Um, we're going to do James chapter 1, verses 5 through 8 today, and this is our second day in our walk through James chapter 1. It goes something like this, or hopefully exactly like this. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. That person must not suppose he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. And so what we're doing is we're just walking through uh, James chapter 1. And I'm going to talk about this paragraph. Uh, hopefully give you some encouragement as you read it and think about it. And then some people are uh, trying to memorize the whole chapter or maybe one paragraph or one verse that really they think would be helpful to internalize and have in their mind all the time for the Holy Spirit to use. Um, and so in verse five, we're just encouraged to seek and to ask God for wisdom. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God. Uh, and it could seem like if you read the first paragraph, verses two through four, that this is just a totally unrelated topic. Like, yes, you know, yesterday we were talking about trials in verses two through four. Now we're talking about wisdom, but I think there's there's a connection in a couple different ways. In verse four, James said, um, the goal is that you would be perfect to complete lacking in nothing. So that word lacking is picked up the same word in verse five, if any of you lacks wisdom. And so uh, that's all of us, right? If any of you lacks wisdom, uh, then just ask God. He's trying to, to grow you and make you more like Christ, and he, he wants to give you wisdom. And also, if you think about it, it's when we are going through trials, it is especially in those times when we need wisdom from God. Uh, we need God's wisdom all the time, but a lot of times our daily life builds in God's wisdom. Like, you know, if you have a job, you, you get up and you go to work, and that's wise. Um, but when kind of everything changes, it takes... Uh, wisdom from God to understand how to do God's will in new and challenging circumstances. And so I've been experiencing this the last couple weeks. Um, a relatively new kind of pastor, uh, new senior pastor at least, and I've been trying to grow and understand how to be a faithful pastor the last few years and uh, making some progress, I hope. And and then a couple weeks ago, just just about everything changes, right? And so there's no books on pastoring when the church never meets. There's no books on pastoring when most of the people have to stay in their homes. And so kind of my weekly rhythm and um, kind of how I use my time and everything has gotten all shaken up. And I think most everybody else, you're kind of in the same spot. And we need God's wisdom right now for how to live out God's will in the specifics of our situations. And, and most of the people I'm coming in contact with in the last few days are stressed. And sometimes that stress is just a layer beneath the surface, but that's, that's not surprising. And if you're feeling stressed right now, then you're not alone. Um, and a lot of that's because everything's new and our rhythms are different. And we need wisdom, how to respond in the midst of these trials. We need wisdom on how to serve. We need wisdom on how to love. We need wisdom on how to maybe be a family that's together 24 hours a day. We need wisdom on um, how to glorify God uh, with our lives in these situations. And so what, what God tells us in verse five is, hey, if you lack wisdom right now, then ask God. And, and then verses six through eight basically tell us, um, and when you ask God, ask in faith. So Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith, it's impossible to believe God. Anybody who comes to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. And so James just says in a few different ways, like ask in faith, don't, don't have doubt. And he's talking, I think, about a strong kind of doubt, a fundamental division in a person where you're divided within yourself on whether you really trust in God. Um, fundamentally unsure about God and his goodness. And so if you read verses six through eight, you know, let him ask in faith with no doubting. Don't be an unstable person. Don't be a double-minded person. Um, so is, is the focus of this paragraph trying to tell us that 
uh, we should spend the rest of the day examining how much doubt we have versus how pure our faith is. And I, I would just say, friends, I don't think that's the main intent of this paragraph. Uh, I, I think the, the focus here is not to say, hey, you really need to make sure and examine every aspect of your thinking and feeling to make sure there's not one ounce of doubt. Uh, we see in a lot of other places, like in the Gospel of Mark, when uh, the, the man whose son was uh, possessed by a demon went to Jesus and said, I believe, help my unbelief. And Jesus responded uh, to his faith, even though it was a uh, small faith. Uh, I don't think that's the main focus. I, I think if you are struggling uh, maybe with doubt, what I'd encourage you to do is focus on verse five. Focus on God's character. Verse five, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God. And then he tells us who gives generously to all without reproach. So focus on God's character. Um, God is generous. And God is not a fault finder. That's what it means without reproach. He's not like nitpicking, not saying, oh, you're coming to me looking for something. Well, um, I, you know, I, you're not measuring up. No, he's saying if you lack something, if you lack wisdom, if you need something, then go ask God. Um, because he's generous. He loves to answer the prayers of his people. He knows you lack things. All right, so let me let me kind of close this, this little devotional with this, Robert Murray McShane, a pastor um, who uh, pastored, you know, decades and even centuries ago, once said this. He says, for every look at yourself, take 10 looks at Christ. For every look at yourself, take 10 looks at Christ. So let's focus outwardly on God's goodness and his kindness and his promises and his invitation, even his command to us to pray, come, ask me, whatever you lack, ask, and I'll give it to you, rather than just focusing mainly inward on the fluctuations of our heart and the fears and the stress and the anxieties. Look away up to Christ 10 times for every time you think about what's going on in your heart. And his goodness and his generosity and his grace will draw faith out of us. Okay, so that's James 1, 5 through 8. Uh, tomorrow we'll look at verses 9 through 11, which has a lot of application for our situation. Church, a few just pastoral kind of updates or words. Um, we have a prayer meeting tomorrow night on Facebook Live. So go to our church Facebook page and uh, you'll at six o'clock and participate in that prayer meeting with us for about 45 minutes. If please continue, let us know if you have any prayer requests, email office at fellowshiplife.church. Or if you need somebody to help you um, and you need somebody to go pick up groceries for you or find toilet paper for you, then email us fellowship, I mean, office at fellowshiplife.church. Um, our church phones are open. Call anytime if you need anything. And remember, friends, for every look at yourself, take 10 looks at Christ.